Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today I'm starting a three-part year wrap-up series. I'm going to talk about my most worn fragrances of this year. Then there will be a video about my best blind buys of 2021. And I'm going to conclude this series with my best discoveries of 2021. So please stay with me for all three parts. And let's get started with today's video, which is my most worn fragrances of this year. Now, I tried to narrow down the list to 10 fragrances. I failed at that. I have, I think, 12, but still try to keep this list at a manageable length. Now, these are in no particular order. And so let's start with Lost Cherry by Tom Ford. And again, if you watched my videos, I don't think many of these will come as a surprise because I've talked about them so much. Now, this one, wow. I couldn't believe how much I fell in love with this fragrance when I got it. I just couldn't believe it. This is an amazingly warm cherry pie with a little bit of a rum or some kind of booze drizzled on top. That's what it gives me. There are a lot of notes in here, uh, you know, doesn't matter. Like I said, warm cherry pie, maybe with some almonds added in and definitely some booze uh, to go with it. Gorgeous, warm, addictive fragrance. Yes, it's not the best performer, you know, just like most people say, it's not the best. It's not the worst either. And in this case, I just don't care. I just don't care. It smells amazing. It makes me feel good when I wear it. And so I have reached for this one a ton. Next one is from Mikolev, and this is Note Vani. Absolutely amazingly beautiful, deep, rich, smooth, creamy vanilla with some boozy elements and some woody elements. I don't think there are any actual boozy notes in here, but it definitely gives off that boozy vibe and it is deep, it is woody, it is just amazing. Love this scent, one of my favorite vanillas in my collection. And again, I have reached for this one a ton, especially during fall and winter. Next, let's switch to a summery fragrance that I fell in love with this year. This is Malibu Party in the Bay from Simone Andrioli. Now, I purchased this one towards the end of the summer, and you can tell by the bottle how much I have used. I was so <laughs> disappointed that I only discovered it at the end of the summer because... I could not put it down. You know, when I got it, I wore it nonstop. Even in September, uh, I still wore it a lot. While the weather was warm, I was trying to get uh, in this fragrance as much as I could. I just fell in love with it. It is so, so addictive. It's like a fresh, tropical uh drink, you know, coconut with rum, definitely a lot of lime in this one. Lime is very, very present. It adds such burst of freshness. I absolutely love it. There's something so incredibly addictive about this fragrance. You know, when I start wearing it, my hand reaches for this every single day. Like I really have to stop myself. So I've worn this one a ton during uh, the end of summer and during September. Next one should not come as a surprise either if you watched my channel. This is the beautiful Lamar from Kajal. Whoa, this is so, so good. I mean, obviously, all of the fragrances that I'm going to talk about in this video are amazing. I'm going to rave about all of them because clearly I've worn them a lot for a reason. I love all of them. And this one, what a stunner. And you know, originally I thought that this fragrance would only work in the warm weather, but I have tried it during the fall in a, in a cooler weather and you know, it works beautifully as well. Um, this one has pineapple, it has apple, it has um, red berries, it has a lot of spices. So I'm really getting this kind of um, 
fresh and juicy pineapple with spices at the beginning and with a little bit of sourness from the apple. And then when it dries down, it becomes very, very syrupy and thick. It's almost like I'm getting this pineapple syrup, which is why I think it works for colder weather as well, because it becomes quite um, dense and thick in a dry down. Absolutely stunning 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 scent um one of my absolute favorites next on the list i have mula mula rouge extreme from byron parfums uh this is explosion of fruits with caramel and supported by oud such a stunner of a fragrance. This is definitely a statement maker. This is not your run-of-the-mill fruity scent. No, no, this is a very special uh, fruity scent. I think it's the oud that adds something so beautiful to this fragrance. Um, it adds such backbone, such strength to it. And then you have these different fruits, which, which are so delicious. And their uh, deliciousness is even amplified more by caramel and vanilla. So beautiful, beautiful scent. Absolutely love it. Have worn it a ton. Now, one of my staples this summer was Aqua Celestia Forte from Amazon Francis Kirkajan. This has become, I think, my favorite citrusy scent. There is something about it that is so special. It has a lot of different citruses in it. It has some florals. It has mint. There is blackcurrant blossom. And, you know, it's a very fresh and at the same time a little bit sweet um, kind of citruses. Um, like I said, when you look at the notes, you think, okay, it's it's your average citrusy scent, but, but no, there's something special about it. And the other thing that I love about this fragrance, you know, citrusy scents are known to be worst performance. They're always, uh, they don't last long. They don't project much or for very long. This is an exception to the rule. This one performs amazingly on me, really amazingly. I am surprised how long lasting it is and how well it projects. Absolutely love it. Like I said, to me, this is the best citrus. Next, I have the beautiful La Belle from Jean-Paul Gaultier, and this is La Belle Le Parfum, so the newer flanker that came out this year. Now, to be honest, I've used both this and the original La Belle um, somewhat interchangeably, but probably because, you know, this one is newer, I've used this one more, and I know the bottle is kind of dark, you can't see, but I think I'm down to here, which, you know, for me, considering the size of my collection is really, really impressive. Absolutely love it. Um, it has such warmth, such sweetness. It has tonka, which comes off um, chocolatey to me. It has pear, which doesn't come off as pear. It comes off as red fruits. And it is just delicious, just absolutely delicious. It always puts me in a good mood. This is a scent I reach for when I don't know what I'm doing, when I, I'm not sure what kind of mood I'm in or what my plans are. This is one of those easy reaches for me, definitely, always. During warm weather, during cold weather, during the day, at night, always. And I'm never disappointed. Whenever I reach for this scent, I am never disappointed. Next on the list, I have one of uh, masterpiece fragrances or the ones that I consider masterpieces. This is Gris Dior from Maison Dior. This is such an elegant, sophisticated and special scent. I mean, again, when you look at the notes, well, it's rose, patchouli, oak moss, mostly and yet the notes don't do it justice. There is some magic in this fragrance. You know, the, the elegance, the sophistication, how it makes me feel. There's something very regal about this scent. Absolutely stunning. Uh, one of the most beautiful rose scents that I have ever tried. Very, very special. And, you know, even though rose is here, but I feel like it's the type of rose that won't bother a lot of people. You know, there are, I happen to be a lover of rose, but there are a lot of people who don't enjoy that floral note. But I think even if you're not a huge fan, 
you might still really, really love it because everything is just done so, so masterfully in this scent. So I absolutely love it. It performs pretty well, definitely not a beast, but performs well. And so again, this is a scent that I reach for quite often. Next, I have Black Phantom from Killian. Well, I've raved about this fragrance for a long time. You know that this is one of my husband's favorite scents on me, and it's one of my favorite scents on me as well. This has chocolate, it has caramel, it has coffee, it has rum, there is sandalwood, almond, I mean, all of these notes sound amazing, absolutely delicious. Um, and it is so rich, it is so dense, it is just a beautiful mix of all of those notes. You know, it's chocolatey, it's a little bit boozy, it definitely has that nutty touch, it is gooey, this scent is gooey to me, you know? That's the best way that I can describe it. Absolutely love it, still love it, loved it when I got it at first, still love it, enjoy it every single time that I wear it, and that is why this is one of my most reached fragrances this year. Next, well, this is one of my big loves. This is Rosé All Day from Gallagher. Again, for me, there's something magic in this scent. This scent pulls me in. I want to wear it every single day. I mean, I absolutely love it. I love the scent profile, you know, that, that mix, that combination of uh, sour apple crisp, crisp with sweet honey and brown sugar, and then you have a little bit of rose, is just amazing. And I love how strong the scent is. It never lets me down. It is so powerful. When I spray it in the morning, I can smell it all day, easily. It's all around me. I just love it. If it wasn't for the fact that my husband hated it, uh, I think I would reach for it even more. But even now, you know, knowing that he's not a huge fan, there are just, I still reach for it, you know? I just told him, you, you don't have a choice. You have to put up with this because I just love it so much. So uh, Rosé All Day is definitely one of my most reached for fragrances. Next one on the list is a fragrance from Atelier des Ors, and this is Rouge Serre. This is a stunning scent that features the note of date. Uh, it also has some plums, which come out more in the opening. It has pear balsam, it has vanilla, it has some woody notes. So this scent definitely has a lot of depth. Uh, it has um, a lot of woods. It is even slight slightly resinous, but at the end of the day, it is very sweet and it is very addictive. Dates are so gorgeous in this fragrance. They're, they're done just right because I think dates can be um, toothachingly sweet sometimes, but here everything else balances out the sweetness of dates perfectly. So Rouge Saray from Atelier de Zors has been one of my top, top fragrances this year. And this brings us to number 12, which is the last fragrance on this list. And this is from Yves Saint Laurent in Love Again. Here again, I'm going to show you how much I've used up. This has been a staple for me during the summer this year. I don't know why, but I craved this fragrance. I wanted to wear it all the time. I loved wearing it at home. I loved wearing it going to sleep. I loved wearing it out. I just craved this scent so much and I worn it so much. Probably during the summer, this was my most worn fragrance. I don't know why, but I just absolutely loved it. This is a stunning fruity floral. It has um, some berries in it. It has peony, it has rose, it has musk, you know, again, all of the notes that I really enjoy. And it's really peony mixed with berries and musk that just make this fragrance intoxicating to me. It is easygoing and it is quite romantic in my opinion. So again, my most reach for fragrance during the summer was In Love Again by YSL. So there you go. This is my list of my most worn fragrances this year. I would love to know what have you worn the most during 2021. Please let me know in the comments.
Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!